was newly married and she went to her doctor to take some results from the test that she took somewhere. And when she got to the doctor, her sex was suspicious and fear within her. And when she went to the doctor, the doctor confirmed her suspicions and fear for a disease that took the life of, of her mother, the life of her older sister, and now it was her turn. She started to see some symptom on her body. And then she came out. She go inside on the corner. And she couldn't contain herself. She starts to weep. Weeping bitterly. Weeping a lot. And one lady came out from the clinic. And she saw her in a corner, weeping, crying a lot. And she approached to her and asked her, what's wrong? Let me quote the word that she spoke. Back home in Africa. She said like this. Why the other women are never going to get this disease simply because they had different parents. Hallelujah. Yeah. Why me? Why me? To get this disease. My mother passed away with this disease. My sister was taken with this disease. And I start to see the symptom. And the doctor confirmed the same disease. Why me? And she weeped out. Hallelujah. That other lady, she remained speechless. She couldn't say anything. Yesterday, I was visiting one of the member of the community, African community in the hospital. He is in a palliative care, okay. Liverpool Hospital. I was there with the family, and I was there with the doctor. The doctor was explaining the family the problem about this man. But the man was complaining. The doctor tried to do their best to treat this man. But they couldn't. Now they are counting days. And this man asked the doctor many, many questions. Why me? Why me? Why me? Why me? Look at the doctor was there. One day with the family of the patient. And I tried to interpret there. The doctor said, we we'll try our best. We we'll try our best, but we couldn't. And what we are doing now is to help you only to reduce, to reduce the pain. And the guy said, reduce the pain only. Yes, to reduce the pain. Why you can't can heal the disease? So we can't. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That young lady by the name of Pamela. She was lamenting herself, complaining herself, why me? It's because only of my parents. This is why I got this, this disease. It's not fair. And you can say it's not fair. I can say it's not fair. Why? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church.
Are you with me? And I know for Pamela, it was a hereditary disease. And the research proved that genetic play a major role in someone's health. It's play a major role. Hallelujah. But you and I, we can say, no, no, no. It's not fair. Why me? Everyone here has a parent. I do have my parent. You have your parent. Everyone has a parent up to the great, 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 great parents. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Follow me. when we look back in the Bible we can see how a kind of hereditary disease can affect us spiritually morally or physically hallelujah can you read for us brother? Read for us Romans 5 19. Let's consider this. Romans chapter 5, verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! By only one man in the past. And because of that, all of us we were born sinner. Hallelujah. And sin is a beginning, is a core issue. When you do your research, it's a core issue of any evil the human being is facing, including disease. Hallelujah. Including disease. It is an hereditary disease, a sin, that has affected the human being, corrupt the human being. Hallelujah. It's not God who has done the things. He created everything was good. Everything was good. But because of the disobedience, the rebellion, unbelief of the human being, Sin gets involved and you bring a lot of consequences. Hallelujah! That consequences you can call it in a Christian way a curse. What is a curse? A curse it is an invisible force evil force that is intent to harm you to bring misfortune to bring judgment upon you it's a force you can't see it curse it's a force caused by Satan himself the work of Satan is to destroy, to kill human beings, to do any more things. This is the work of Satan. Hallelujah! Right now, you may face something, an invisible force, evil one, who is destroying your life. Bring calamity, bring judgment, Bring sickness, divide your house, bring violence between husband and wife. Hallelujah. Bad behavior to the children to be addicted. It's a force behind. Hallelujah. You didn't know that. But there is a source. Hallelujah. 
the curse cannot affect someone without the cause. There must be a reason. Hallelujah. There must be a reason that will cause the curse to come to you. But it's unfair. You didn't do anything. An innocent child to be born under a punishment. Why? She didn't know anything. <clears throat> but because maybe the great, great, great spirit, they have done one thing. They rebelled to God. They were disobedient. Unbelief. And that evil spirit, evil force, get in. Hallelujah. And you may say, no, no, they already died. Let me tell you. Those evil force, we call it demon. It's a power behind it. What, what a person die and he has that kind of force, when he die, they won't put him in a tomb with that, that, that demon. The demon will come out. And then we're looking for someone to the lineage of this family. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And open your mind and your heart to understand maybe the source of things you are striving now. Hallelujah! Hallelujah, church! The demon who died! Can you read for us Matthew 12? Matthew 12, verse... What verse, my friend? Matthew 12. Verse 43. Matthew 12, verse 5. Matthew 12, verse 43 to 5. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest, and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. This is how the spirit world works. The person who died, the great, great, great parent who died, when he died, because there is, there is a gene, genealogy, in the Greek, it's called genia. Genia comes from the word gene. That's life. Because he died, the, the spirit will come out and will look in, not anyone else will follow the blood. Hallelujah. He will come to the child. Hallelujah. Among six or seven child, someone could be affected by the same situation, if it's a disease, if it's a character, any behavior, someone of them, you are innocent. You didn't know anything. Hallelujah. This is the work of the devil. Hallelujah. It's the work of the devil to come to kill you, to kill your children, to destroy your future, to bring pain. But we have a good news. Hallelujah. We have a good news. The Father God who created us is so the brain of Satan. He said, I can't be like that. Hallelujah. The Bible said that an innocent in the world man, one man, can read that again in the Roman uh, 19, uh, 19. Hey, this one is B. What it says? Romans 5. 19. 19. For as, for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience. Ah. Ah. Also by one man. Hallelujah. He came and changed everything. Hallelujah. Christ was redeemed. Hallelujah. 
Christ cometh to redeem us Amen. to all kind of curses, maybe. Hallelujah. You need to know that as a believer, you need to know that you have been redeemed with all those kind of curses. If you believe, say Amen. Amen. That's the goodness of being in the shadow of the hand of God. Hallelujah. Some other people in the family may be affected, but because you are under the umbrella of the grace of God, they say this one was already redeemed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. This is the goodness of being a child of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be here suffering but you don't know what to do. How can you do? Don't cry like Pamela. Hallelujah. Don't cry like Pamela. Because you have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. At the last cost, very high cost, and he said, finish, hallelujah. Amen. It's a matter of believing. Amen. It's a matter of accepting the word of God Amen. as it is, hallelujah, Amen. to be set free. Amen. The word of God is not a storybook, my brother. Amen. It's not a storybook, the word of God. There is a power in the word of God. Because the word of God is Jesus Christ himself. Hallelujah. He put the flesh on him. Can you read for us? Second Samuel 21. Second Samuel. Now there was a famine in the days of David for three years, year after year, and David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, It is because of Saul and his bloodthirsty house, because he killed the Gibeonites. So the king called Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but so much. You can hear the story and go read the story by yourself. During the reign of David, after Saul died, David was right, was running there in his kingdom. He was there doing everything, and suddenly the thing changed. The family came. There was said that one year coming. There is no rain. No crop they try to plant, but all the crop dry up. They said, no, maybe it's normal. Let's wait maybe second year. The second year, it became the same. Hallelujah. Everyone will start to look up in storage. The time of famine in Egypt, Satan can come in again and to change your mind. Hallelujah! Satan can come. In time of trouble, be careful. In time of suffering, be careful. Because Satan is trapping you there. He's sweating you for you to complain. When you complain, when you complain in time, in time of trouble or suffering, you give the ability to Satan to have a power again to reinforce your problem because complaining is not good for the children of God. Hallelujah! The second year, the third year, the government could gather together. They tried to discuss what wrong this, what wrong this. They didn't know why. You may know why. Why? You, you may ask yourself, why? Why there is a lack of financial? Why there is these things? Why? And why? And why? And many 
see people, they don't know where to go to ask the, the answer of this why many people. You try to look the answer in your mind, in your money, education, friends. They can't do, get, 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 give you anything. Only Jesus can do something. Hallelujah. Is the answer of the My neighbor, the other side of the fence. He has a son. He came from uh, Mauritius. Mauritius. We can speak a little bit French. We can speak French to each other. But there is not, it's not the, 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 the people of French. It's a Creole. But can, we can understand each other. He has a son. They are living in the same area. Well educated. It's an IT, it's good money, good life, everything there. Everything is there. But the parent didn't know that he's suffering within him. He's trying to look for where I can have a peace and joy in my life. No matter I have money, he couldn't. Hallelujah. He will go to bar, he go to the holiday, go to beach, everywhere but within him. There's something missing. Because they have a customer. Every Friday, I can hear a lot of people the other side talking, barbecuing, laughing. They have the, 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 the customer to be together once a, one Friday, one Friday before tonight, they will be there. And the father told him that, you know, this man, the other son, is a pastor. They, call them, they are Catholic. They are very, very good Catholic. They have that uh, the, the worship Mary in somewhere in, in the backyard. This is a, the, the other son is a, is a pastor. And he can, he can speak French. Hallelujah! But this son didn't open up to the father or the parent what he's traveling with. One day, the children will play the ball. And the ball go up to the other side until my backyard. And they couldn't come there. He said, well, let me go there. The general opened the streets. Go, 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 and come and knock on the door. They came on the door. Oh, sorry, I want to pick up my ball. The children from the ball came up on the door. They allow him, and he go to the backyard. When he came to the backyard, in my work here, there is a, the, the word I, I, I wrote there, Jesus is the answer. Hallelujah! Amen. He said it. He confessed the things. When I was going, my eyes were focusing to look for the ball. But when, when I lift up my head and I see Jesus the answer, I felt something in my heart. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. I felt something in my heart. He came there with very astonishing. Oh, he ran in away to the family there. He said, tell me, something touched my heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Something touched my heart. The name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's an answer to you. Since that day, the cast is looking for us. He's looking for me. You know how we know these things? They met with my wife on the park. My wife with our grandson there, and they went together. Ah, you are the other one there, yeah. Ah, you are Christian, yeah. And she, she starts to release it. Speak to my wife now. I'm looking for your husband. You know, this is the time is that now to say the story. Hallelujah! Hallelujah, church! And now it's already changed. The other day he was calling my children and my wife to go to his church so that he can give a testimony. Wow. Hallelujah! Yeah. We have a God. Yeah. He's an answer of everything. Yeah. And David went. He said that I can't say like this. I need to seek the face of God. Hallelujah! I need to seek the face of God because of the problem you are going through in your family. Hallelujah! You are asking yourself, 
Why my husband is like this? Why my wife is like this? I can't control my children. What's wrong with them? You don't know. They don't know. There is a force that pushing them to lose out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. You may be here struggling with something, an evil force that pushing you, that bringing disease, that bringing the, the misfortunate, bringing all wrong of things, and you are asking yourself, why this? But remember, you are the son of the living God. Hallelujah. We need to know. Knowing this will give you power. It will give you strength. It will give you confidence. You won't fear anything. No matter something may come up to you, you will tell yourself, I'm a child of the living God. I can't fear anything. No harm can come up to me. No matter you can do these things to my children, but I know my Savior lives. Hallelujah! swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. If this spirit could come back and find your door is locked, hallelujah, find your door is locked, could not come in, you cannot come in, you have opened up a door without to know. Hallelujah. You have opened up the door without to know. And the first door is your tongue. The first door is your mouth. Whatever you say, the evil things you are saying against yourself, against your job, against your children, against your husband, it will return back to you. And Christian, don't know that. Don't know the power of life and birth is in the tongue. Hallelujah! It's on your tongue! It will be better to shut up your mouth. No matter what's happening you are going through. When you are broke, don't go everywhere and praising your brokenness to each and every one of your friends. Hallelujah! You are establishing something in the spiritual realm that will put you down, that will take you a hole for you to stay there. 
Hallelujah. Better to keep quiet. And fight the fights. Hallelujah. Send yourself in fights. And say, I rebuke everything that may come in one way or another. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. someone because of something it's not him it's not her the evil spirit doing something to disturb you to change your life so that you can start to complain say God is not there why well, don't see God God is there what's for your good hallelujah children of God you need to watch which door? There are a lot of doors. There are a lot of doors. More than seven doors. I don't have a time to explain each and every door so that you can always be watchful so that you can open the door. If you open the door, the devil said that you will walk in. Remember, he said that he is my house. He is my house. You have done your, 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 your heart, your body to be the house of the evil. Instead of being the house of God, where the Holy Ghost may stay there, we cannot share the house with any devil. Hallelujah! They can't share. Never! Hallelujah! It will be better! Hallelujah, church. Keep the doors where Satan. There are not many doors. If I can tell you some of the doors here, because of Christianity, there is a level of Christianity of believing. Hallelujah. The things have already faced the spiritual realm. Maybe you have not, not, not facing yet. Oh, you may face other things. Another experience. I didn't know. Hallelujah. There are a lot of doors you can open up without you need to know. And it's been something. Some of the things I learned back home, I found them at school here. So doing Christian counseling. Christian counseling. They start to give us the list of the things, the evil things you can put in your house. Hallelujah. I was very amazed. Uh, I saw the white people may know these things. Hallelujah. There is about 20 things you and I could not know unless the revelation come up to us. So, oh, if it is some tools, only tools, you can put in your house, put somewhere, hang on it somewhere, some image. You put an image, an image I don't know from where. Satan is looking for his own things. Hallelujah. You will come there and stay there because you open up the door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Because of the town. Because of the town. Because of the town. Curse. Behold the curse. Don't open up the curse. Yes, it can come from another way from our ancestor, but there's another way it can come through. Hallelujah. The idols. Can you read for us Exodus then? Exodus. Read for us Exodus and prepare also First Corinthians. You can see there, down there. Read first Exodus 20 maybe, yeah? Exodus, Exodus 20, uh, verse 4 to 6. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in, is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, and I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers up to the children, to the third and the fourth generation, of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands and 
to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. This is the law of God. The law of God is the will of God. It's the purpose of God upon you, warning you, helping you. Do not do that. Worshiping an idol. You and I, we think an idol is only, only some creature was, was created by, from the wood somewhere in a, in, a, in, a, in a lost corner in Africa, in a jungle somewhere, down by some pagan people. This is what you think. This is what you think and this is what myself I can think. This is true, but there are some other you know, idol. The one you can worship, you can respect, you can honor more than God. Hallelujah. You know that there are people who, who adore sleeping. You know that? Hallelujah. You sleep around. I won't go to church. It's, it's very cold. It's raining. I won't go to church. Better to sleep and stay at home. God knows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sympathy. And I said, no, 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 no. This, this, I can't do these things. What said Ephesians? Ephesians 5, 5. 5, 5. Says, for well, this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, no covetous, covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. Did they say the word Greek there? <clears throat> not this version. Okay, the salvation said that great greed. I think you know about greed. The, the, the most educated people, they cannot think that they can help worship an idol. But you can without God. Loving something extremely without God. Someone from the stock exchange market can worship an idol without God. Be careful. This is the second commandment that is very strong toward God. That can bring the tangible things to you and to your offspring. Hallelujah. I said these things so that you can know that. But in all things, our God is God. Don't be disturbed. Don't be discouraged. And think, how I can know that? This thing is a curse of an idol. My great 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 father only already passed away. Yes, I can see all those kind of things in our lineage. My my sister didn't get married. And if he got married, the husband he did to declare the divorce. Oh my sister is there. He doesn't have a child. He tried his best. And when he first he got the first child, the child died. And to the other one, the child uh, passed away. Pass away. Pass away. God is telling you something. There must be something with you. Hallelujah. There's a way to change the things, brother and sister. There's a way you can stand on the gate because of your family. This is a way you can stand on the gate because of your husband and wife. The all things they have done, you, because you have been saved, you can stand on the gate and declare. Hallelujah. Read for us and we finish. The Hemiah one, you can see that down there. Read, read quickly, remember. Hemiah 1, 1 5 to 6. 5 to 6 says, and I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments, please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open, that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night, for the children of Israel, your servants, and 
and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept your commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinances which you commanded your servant Moses. Remember, I pray, the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandment and do them, though some of you were cast out of the furthest parts of the heavens, yet I will gather them from there and bring them Hallelujah. to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling place Hallelujah. for my name. Go ahead and meditate this word. This was the prayer of Nehemiah. He was praying on behalf of, of the nation, the nation of Israel, for what this great, great father has done. They disobeyed, they were unbelieved, rebellion. But Nehemiah stayed on the gate and he said that we ask forgiveness. He put himself within. I ask forgiveness no matter. He didn't do that but he stood there and said we have, we have do something wrong. I ask forgiveness on that behalf. Hallelujah. You can stand on behalf of your family. On behalf of your husband your children. Don't judge them. Don't grumble, complain about them. Stand firm and declare. Ask forgiveness and God will respond to your situation. May God bless you. If you are there, you can look back and see how you struggle. It's not yourself, your brother, your sister, your uncle, your cousin. You go back, back, back. You follow the life. You find that son. He passed away. She passed away with the same thing. Same suffering. Ah, it's your time to say that. I want to stand on the gates. Hallelujah. Or it's for you. We'll try your best. But you can't move. You are stuck somewhere. And you don't have power. It's your time to say, God, I stand on the gate. Upon my family, upon my life. And God will change the situation. Let's stand up. 